Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a really pretty spring themed manicure. I do want to do a lot of 3D flowers for this one. I'm kind of doing this to feature some of the products from my last video, which was the Timu nail haul. If you guys did miss out on that, I will have it linked down below as well as at the end of the video. So let's get right into the video. So the main products I am trying to use for this manicure are the 3D sculpting gels. I have a pink one and an orange one. The orange one does glow in the dark. I did also pull out the green one, but I didn't end up using that for this manicure. You can use it for like leaves. I will be using Nails by Dev's silicone sculpting tool. This has a sharp pointy side, which is really important for sculpting these types of 3D flowers. So I did go ahead and put a glove on my right hand so I don't have to touch the gel with my actual hand. That is definitely important. You don't want to get any gel products on your skin. I just took the chisel side and I scooped up a little bit of the pink sculpting gel and I'm going to roll that between my fingers into a little ball. This is basically the first step to creating the 3D flower. I just went ahead and placed it down onto the nail and using the pointy side of the silicone tool, I'm going to go ahead and start sculpting out the flower petal. For the flower petals, you do want the center to be very mashed down and you do want the edges of the flower petal to be more raised up. Definitely make sure whenever you're sculpting your 3D flower petals that you are pointing it towards one area on the nail. That is going to be the center of your flower. I am going to be repeating the exact same thing to create all of the other flower petals. I do want to go ahead and say one of the most important tips that I have for doing 3D flowers is making sure that the bead of whatever product that you're using is the same size as all of the others. If you feel like that is something that you struggle with and you are using a gel product like these 3D carving gels, do make sure to actually roll all of the flower petals that you'll need for your nail design before placing them on the nail. You can place them on a nail art palette and this will be able to allow you to visualize exactly how big you're making each of the flower petals and allow you to make adjustments if you make some too big or too small. I do actually do this at the end of the video to actually pre-make all of the beads of gel that I need for the flower petals so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about at the end. I do want to go ahead and say that I did not cure any of these flower petals individually and I didn't cure them just because this type of gel is extremely stiff and it's not going to be moving around on the nail and I'm not going to lose any of the 3D detail that I put into it. But if you are afraid that you're going to move one of the flower petals while moving the next one beside it, definitely go ahead and cure or at least flash cure between each flower petal. I did go ahead and start moving down the side of the nail. The first flower that I did is a three petal flower which is being cut off by the cuticle area of the nail. That is technically a complete flower and the rest that I'm doing down the side of the nail is kind of just like individual flower petals. You might can count two of these as like a flower that's tucked underneath the previous flower, but I just kind of assume that they are individually placed flower petals. I do want to go ahead and say that I do have an inspiration for today's manicure. This is from Dawn Marie Nails. I loved the colors and the placements of her flowers, so I was definitely inspired to try some 3D flower placement like she did. I just really love this set that she did and I am taking inspiration from the pinky nail. I really liked the other nails as well but I just kind of wanted to focus on something a little bit more simple and repetitive just because I am kind of new to doing 3D sculpted flowers. Once I have the flower petals placed, I am going to go ahead and cure. This is the shell lamp from the Timu haul as well. I really like it honestly. So I am going back and doing basically the exact same design with the flower petals except it's going to be mirrored. So I'm starting at the free edge and I'm doing a full three petal flower. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same flower petals going down the opposite side of the nail. Keep in mind whenever you are building out your flowers and placing your petals, you do want to leave enough room for the rhinestone placement in the center. I do see some people place the rhinestones and then build the flower around the rhinestone. 
that's a really good way to make sure that you have enough room for the rhinestone placement in the center of the flower. I personally just like to build out the flower petals first just because I don't want to get any of the product on the rhinestone itself. I know you could probably clean it off before you cure but this is just what I've been doing. I do need to try the other method just because I haven't done it myself yet and it might actually make things a little bit easier but for now this is just how I'm doing it. It's honestly not too hard to judge how much room to leave for the rhinestones in the center unless you are doing one of the types of flowers that requires a lot of rhinestones in the center. I do know that the three flowers that have a big rhinestone and like little rhinestones all around it in the center can be a lot harder than just one single rhinestone. I would definitely recommend that you try both methods and see what works best for you. Once I have all of the pink flower petals placed, I am going to go ahead and cure for a full minute. So I am going ahead and taking the orange 3D sculpting gel and I'm going to repeat the exact same flower placement except it's going to be mirrored onto the index nail. So for the pinky, the flowers do lean towards the right side of the nail and for the index nail, they are going to lean towards the left side. It does depend on your personal preference of how you want the flowers to be placed. I do kind of follow leaning the colors towards the edges of my hand. That is just what I like to do for the nail designs. So I'm kind of following that exact same principle for the 3D flowers. I know I haven't quite mentioned it yet, but the base of my nails is actually Acrogel and I used the light nude color from Red Iguana. I did this over top of nail tips. I did not include that in this video just because I wanted to focus on the nail art itself. In the base of the nails, it's just very simple, single color acro gel application. I did file them and I applied a matte gel top coat, so that is what I am working over. I do know that most people that do 3D flowers on nails do it in acrylic. I know that has to be extremely advanced application technique because I can barely even do like basic acrylic application. So doing 3D flowers with a gel product like the 3D carving gels is extremely helpful for me. You don't have to worry about having the acrylic odor so there's basically no smell. Because the gel does not cure until you put it under the nail lamp so you do have as long as you need to sculpt it out perfectly how you want it. Another good thing about working with a gel product like this 3D carving gel is it holds its shape extremely well so you don't have to worry about chasing it around the nail and it doesn't lose the 3D effect that you're placing in it. So if you are getting into 3D flowers or 3D nail art, I definitely recommend this type of gel for the sculpting. Once I have the index nail like I want, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. I did go ahead and get out some of my neon rhinestones. These are all different colors and I didn't want to do like crazy colors for this nail design. So I did go ahead and pick out the smallest orange and pink rhinestones from this mix. So to adhere the rhinestones, I am using the clear builder gel. Again, this is from the Timu haul from my last video. As I mentioned, I did use this to adhere rhinestones and this is the nail set that I'm talking about. So I just took a dotting tool and I dipped it into the gel and I'm going to be placing this in the center of the flower petals. You do want to adhere your rhinestones with something stronger than just a top coat gel. That way they do not pop off while you're wearing the nails. Then taking Kira Sky's rhinestone applicator, I'm just going to pick up the pink small rhinestones and I'm going to be placing this into the uncured builder gel. This was extremely satisfying and I love the color contrast between these two pinks. I really love when I'm able to combine multiple shades of one color, especially into a simplistic nail design. I feel like it gives it so much contrast and really brings out the color itself. I am going to repeat the exact same thing for the index nail, except for this one I am going to be using the orange rhinestones. So of course, once I have the rhinestones in place, I am going to go ahead and cure. Here are what the nails are looking like so far. I was absolutely obsessed. I sat and looked at these for quite a while, deciding what to do for the other nails. I did decide to do some nail art, so I have these two shades of pink. I have the gel liner Spice Girl and the pink gel polish color My Boo. These are both from Nails by Dev. 
I was trying to get a color that kind of matched the flower petals. This one wasn't exact, but I just went ahead and used it as it was. Taking Nails by Dev's 9mm liner brush, I'm going to pick up the pink gel polish and we're going to be doing some abstract lines on the ring fingernail. This is a very abstract type of nail design, so please do not stress yourself out over making this perfect. You can definitely do this however you want. I did want to add quite a bit of color, but I did want to space out the lines a little bit more than my typical swirl type of abstract nail designs. I also wanted to change the direction of the abstract lines. I didn't want it to be like a single swooping type of nail design. So I'm also going to be changing up the direction of how the lines are placed. These are also very loopy, so pretty much all of the lines are going to be curving around each other which I ended up really liking how it turned out because I don't really have a ton of things to say about doing an abstract type of nail design. I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys watch this part and I'll come back once I finish all of the lines. So I kind of forgot to film curing the lines, but they are cured. Next I am taking a dotting tool and using the color Spice Girl. This is a gel art liner by the way, it has a really thick consistency. I'm just going to be doing some different sized dots in little groups on the nail. Some of these dots are placed on the lines, which is perfectly fine. And like I said, these are in different sizes as well. I did want to do like little groups of these dots. I feel like it gives the nail design a really pretty look. I did pick this color because it does match the rhinestones that I used for the pinky. Once I have all of the dots placed, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. Next, I am taking Nails by Dev's color NYX Splat. This is a really vibrant orange as well as the white gel liner. I'm going to be mixing these two colors together to get a lighter shade of orange that is pretty close to the flower petals on the index nail. Believe it or not, I actually don't have that many orange gel polish colors, and the ones that I do have are like extremely orange. I really did need a pastel orange color for this, and I didn't have it, so that is why I did mix them up. For the middle fingernail, I am going to do the exact same thing that I did for the ring fingernail, except I'm going to be doing this in orange. The pattern of these lines are not the same as the ring fingernail, but you can make them the same if that's what you like. I just wanted a little bit more variety with this nail design. Of course, once I have all of the lines like I want, I did go ahead and cure. After the lines are cured, I am going back with the dotting tool and the color NYX Splat, and I'm going to be doing the little groups of dots over the entire nail. One thing I was kind of surprised about was how closely this color matched the rhinestones on the index nail. Like I've been saying, I really like the two different shades of one color for a nail design, and just incorporating the colors like this was really pretty. I was really obsessed with how the nails were turning out so far. After I've done the little groups of dots, I did go ahead and cure for another full minute. Now taking Cheyenne's Nails Velvet Matte Gel Top Coat, I'm going to go ahead and top coat those two middle nails. Even though I haven't done a video on Cheyenne's Nails products lately, I still really love all of her products. I actually have a full collection I haven't even done a nail set for yet. I really hope I'll be able to get to that very soon. I did go ahead and cure and this is how the nails are looking. Moving on to the thumbnail, I do already have the beads of gel ready for the flower application. This is what I was telling you guys to do if you do kind of struggle with keeping the same size for all of the beads. Mine aren't the best, but you do get the idea. So basically these beads are kind of marbled. So to do this, I am taking the corner of the chisel tool and I'm picking up one little scoop of the orange. And for the other corner, I'm going to be picking up the pink. Do keep in mind you have to eyeball it half and half, that way you're not making extremely big flower petals. Taking these two colors, I'm going to very gently roll them together using my fingers. 
You do not want to over mix these, we're just slightly rolling them together. I went ahead and placed it down on the thumbnail and I'm going to sculpt it out into the flower petal just as the other nails. For the thumbnail, I'm actually doing a really big flower. This I don't think is like a realistic flower, but I have seen people do very similar flower designs before. So we're going to be placing five rhinestones in the center of this flower. They are pretty big. So I'm making sure to leave a pretty good gap in the center of all of these flower petals. For me to measure this out, I went ahead and did this one row of flower petals. I did go ahead and do the tip flower petal as well. And I did the same amount of flower petals on the opposite side. And before I did the final flower petal to connect all of these into one flower, I did go ahead and quickly test out the placement of the rhinestones in the center. Once I tested that, I was able to see that all of them would fit, so I did go ahead and do the flower petal connecting all of them, and then I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. I am going back with the builder gel and a liner brush, just painted some of the builder gel in the center of the petals, and I'm going to go ahead and place the rhinestones. In the center is a big neon pink rhinestone and I am alternating the color and the sizes for the rest of the flower. Once I have the rhinestones in place, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. Then taking Kira Sky's cuticle oil, this is the rose scent, one of my favorites. I love how this one smells. I'm just going to place this on all of my cuticles and massage it in. And here are the nails. I really love how this nail set turned out. Please let me know what you guys think of this nail set down below in the comments. I did not film or take any pictures of this nail set in the dark. As I did mention, the orange sculpting gel does glow in the dark. I'm sorry, it just looked a little bit weird and I felt like I didn't want to include that. Do make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!